so this is the problem set up. This is a kind of a classic problem, and I think this is a good example to illustrate some basic things about uh, high voltage um, um, situations that's good to know. So it comes down to this question. So when you look at Van der Graaff generators, you might notice a particular feature. Like, what do you notice about this Van der Graaff generator? Does anything stick out, like the first time you see it? Hmm? There's a ball on top. There's a ball on top. And the thing about this ball is it's pretty big. And um, with the more higher voltage Van der Graaff generators, you'll see that this ball gets bigger and bigger. Like, why? It's, so you know, somehow bigger turns out to be better. And I want to explain why it's better. So this is, um, let me call this voltage. Um, voltages of conductors. So this is the setup. Let's say you have two spheres that are both conductors far from each other. So I have one conducting sphere here, and there's another conducting sphere here. And just imagine they are really far from each other. So the electric field due to this will not affect this, and vice versa. But there's a strange feature here. They are connected together by a wire. So there's a conducting path between them. But you know, make the wire as thin as possible so that you can still say the electric field from here doesn't affect this. And I tell you, this sphere is at some voltage. And then this is the question that I could ask that would be relevant to addressing uh, what I was just mentioning. What is the electric field just outside a small sphere? And what is the electric field just outside a big sphere? Then you know, give some parameters. Let's say this says a radius of small r. This says radius of big r. So I feel like this is probably easy enough, right? Electric field just outside a small sphere. So just to walk you through steps quickly, I only have like three minutes. This is how I do it. So I know that around this spherical surface, voltage is v naught. That's what's given, right? And I recall that electric field due to sphere of ch charges is similar to electric field due to a point charge. Then I remember this formula is still probably applicable. Like I don't have to drive this from scratch to use it for this sphere here. So I can say voltage due to a sphere outside, meaning, um, well, I'll just say outside, is going to be equal to, uh, let me, sorry, let me change my symbols. I want to use R and <laughs> let me call this R small, R big. So that's going to be, well, full, um, so outside the sphere, it's going to look like this. Um, amount of charge, whatever that is, divided by four pi epsilon naught, um, the distance r squared. Sorry, not r squared, distance r, right? And based on the information given here, this is what I can say. At the distance r, um, so I can say at r equals capital R small, I can say, well, that's going to be equal to V naught. At let me put it this way. So that's the dis distance of dependence. And based on this, I can say um, R equal to RS is equal to V naught. But that should also be consistent with this expression here. So that's equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught RS. So you can imagine solving this for Q and then plug it in here. And when you do all that, you are going to get for the, um, wait, wait. So I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself. So I have these two expressions, right? Let me just not do any extra new stuff and go to the electric field right away. 
So the electric field here is going to be, the expression is the same, you know, for the sphere. So it will be amount of charge divided by 4 pi epsilon naught um, rs squared, just at this outside the sphere. So I can take this, solve it for q, plug it in here. Okay? When I finish that, then I get, um, so v naught, a lot of things cancel. I get v naught times rs, not rs. v naught divided by rs. Good? Everyone follow this so far? So here's the question, which I have less than a minute to address. How do I do it for the big sphere? So you know, all the information is given for the small sphere. I need something that will connect me from the small conducting sphere to the large uh, conducting sphere. So this is a rule that you can infer from the rules we have covered so far. But you know, it'll take more than a few seconds that we have to, for you to guess that. So let me give you that rule. So, so far this is what you know, right? Electric field is zero inside a conductor. So let me ha have you imagine a path that goes from this point, which is a V naught, and follow the path inside of this wire and end up at this point here. What is my change in voltage along that path? Does my voltage change along that path? Yeah, if we are having a hard time seeing that voltage doesn't change, come back to this definition. Voltage change is electric field times the displacement. If your electric field is zero, that's one of the rules, then voltage doesn't change. So that's the third and the last rule about conductors, which is that voltage is constant inside the conductor. Or, you know, delta V is equal to zero inside the conductor. Now, I want you to be careful. This does not mean voltage is equal to zero. In, on this conductor, voltage is not equal to zero. It does not mean voltage equal to zero. It means change of voltage is equal to zero. And I guess I don't have enough time to drive it. And when you look at it, um, one of the surprising results that you will get is that electric field out, so this conductor is at the same voltage as the small sphere. And the result you get here is that the electric field outside the big conductor, it'll be, um, this will be smaller than the electric field outside of the small conductor. So the electric breakdown that happens with the you know, sparks and whatnot, it depends on the strength of the electric field, not the voltage. And that's why when they make a Van der Graaff generator for large voltage, they make it big so that the electric field outside is as small as possible so you don't get electrical breakdown. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's all the time I have. Oh, one last thing I should mention. Because of this, the surface of a conductor automatically defines an equipotential surface. This, by definition, is an equipotential surface because inside the conductor, it's all same voltage. So when you look at the, just the surface, it's all at the same voltage. So, yeah. So you'll see this more in problems. Uh, that's all the time I have.